Welcome to this week's edition of Chalk Talk with the head coach of the Fayetteville State Broncos, Alfonso Key. I'm your host, Alex Podligar, and we're coming to you from the campus of Fayetteville State University, where I am joined by Coach Key now to review the latest in all news regarding Broncos basketball. And Coach Key, thanks for joining us today. Always a pleasure to holiday my week. I hear that, of course. Now, you guys are really, I think, the highlight of your week was a nice victory over St. Andrews on the road, 94-72, a convincing victory primarily because of how well you guys played in the second half. Tell us a little bit about that because you guys shot 70% from the floor, outscored them 41 to 15 to start the second half before really romping through that game. You were down seven at the break and able to come all the way back and win convincingly. The first thing I want to say is um, this summer, Daryl Armstrong told me every time he watched the interview, I never smile. I need to start smiling. He said, Key, you got to smile sometimes. So I'll make sure each time we talk, I smile at least once or twice. But definitely, I was excited about our win. Anytime at our level, you beat a team on at their, their place is pretty convincing. And as a year matriculate, we're trying to get better. So I thought we played well. We improved on some things we need to get better at. And um, it always feels good when you do it together. Down seven at the break, only forced three turnovers at the half. And you guys had to feel like you're a little bit out of sorts coming off the loss to UNC Pembroke and then just exploded in the second half. Like we said, it shot 70% from the floor, ended up with six guys in double figures. Everything seemed to come together. Was that about the best half of basketball you guys have played? And what turned the tide for you? Well, I think so. Obviously, we played a great half of basketball. The first half kind of takes identity. You have to kind of fill it out. They're a, a dynamic team and kind of unorthodox. They're very skilled. They play all guards, and they can still rebound. So we kind of had to adjust um, to them at the same time, improving our press. So I think that by us continuing to pressure them and play our style of basketball and getting the ball inside and executing, uh, we're very successful. Talk about some of your players now, one of them being senior John Harrington, who's had a really nice start to the season so far this year. He's averaging almost 11 points a game, leading the CIAA in field goal percentage. What's been the difference for John so far this season? Now, obviously, he was a key player for you guys last exactly. year, but he looks like a really a completely different player so far this year. Well, I think three things. First of all, again, even he being a junior last year, he's still new. So I think just being comfortable in the system with your teammates, with the league, um, you're going to grow him a tool. Secondly, he had an unbelievable offseason. He worked as hard as anybody I've seen work. He committed his body, um, his skill work, and um, being in shape. So he, he gets most of the credit. And thirdly, his teammates looking for him. You need support. So they recognize he's a key factor, and they do all they can to give him the basketball spots. Second half of Chalk Talk today, we're going to talk to two of your youngest players, Tyrell Tate and Anthony Shelton. That's obviously somewhere you want to go in order to really build this program, to where it can be a year-in, year-out elite program. First off, talk about what those two teams are bringing to the club so far, or those two guys, what they're bringing to the club so far. In particular, Tate, you know, an all-rookie performer last year, and Shelton, a starting point guard at fre as a freshman for you. Well, first off, you're right. You want to build through high school players. When you first get in the place, you really have to figure it out and, and make sure you have enough to compete. But as the year goes on, we continue to recruit high school guys and build them. Um, Tate is obviously a very good basketball player, very aggressive, but a quality young person. And a 3.0 student, so he brings all the gamut of what you want your uh, program to represent in the future. And Anthony walked in a situation where he had an opportunity um, that was um, presented to him and took full advantage. But more importantly, Anthony, you got support from your other guard. So Anthony would not play well without Savon Best or Seth Hawkins supporting him and working him out. So as he gets credit, I give credit to my guys' team first attitude. Yeah, this team is, you know, a lot of talk is centered around the seniors that you had back, a lot of those guys in the program, you know, as junior college transfers. But this is a fairly young team as well in certain respects and really in some key spots for you. Exactly. You talk about it is a a senior-led team, but a new team, meaning majority of the seniors are only in their second season. We talk about seniors really with uh, um, substance, meaning guys been here four years. So when Tate's a senior, it's a different type. So as well as my seniors are playing, they're still learning. This is only year two for them in the system. But um, as you were saying, uh, we're, we're excited about the dynamic of, of our team. We do have great veterans, been here two years or so, and also great underclassmen, and we're merging together as one. That seems to be the key thing for you guys as well, too. You seem to maybe get back a little bit to what you were doing last year at the end of the year. 
in that St. Andrews game, particularly in the second half. He seemed more cohesive, more as a unit. Is this a team that needs to try to remember that, hey, we were successful last yes. year. We did a lot of great things last year. Yeah. Is that something you guys are trying to get back to? It is. And it's a learning process. You're talking about last year. Um, you're coming in with a plethora of new faces from Tim Plummer to Sidney Evans and John Harrington, Terrell Tay, Devin Thompson. So it's new. And this year we have some returning faces with some expectations that come from the outside. We tell our guys um, we have some called a standard, which is internal, a style of play. So it was kind of new uh, for the first time. They said we should be pretty good. So I said, how do you handle that? Who I listen to? So it was new. And what does pretty good mean? Winning games. But at the same time, being good is sticking to what you do. The same style as last year. And we learned, you know, kind of hard way. It's a process that regardless of what the outside says, we continue to build. Last year, one game away. And um, that was positive. Now we bring in some faces, but growing. And I think we learned experience from the um, sense of listening to outside sources. You guys, th this difficult non-conference schedule that you guys have going right now doesn't get any easier over next week. Yes. Uh, Virginia Union here at Capel Arena at 7 o'clock on Monday, and then you travel to Barton uh, uh, later in the week. Let's preview some of that a little bit. Your thoughts on, on Virginia Union coming in here? Well, first of all, who made the schedule? I don't know who did that. Actually, it was me. It was me. So, um, obviously, Union comes in with a brand name about a uh, national champion, Seattle Dominant, and that's where I want to be. I know it takes time, so my philosophy is let's go on and see what they're about in the non-conference and uh, I'm learning and grow, but they, they bring a tradition. Um, new coach, but they still have a tradition and familiarity, um, but in the short term, they bring um, some, some good athletes, um, some good length, um, a, a nice matchup zone, and, and a well-coached team. Last year, I mean, in the past, they've been more of just a big bruising type of uh, team, but they bring a tradition, which I, I look forward to um, bringing to us one day. And going on to Barton, as we talked about another national champion, we had a chance to uh, play them already. And we want to see how much have you improved from last time we've seen them. And uh, I'm excited about the, the attitude and spirit of our team to get there. Well, Coach, we look forward to it this week. I know you got to be excited about that senior leadership you have and as well as the future of this team with guys like Tyrell Tate and Anthony Shelton playing key roles for you. So we appreciate you dropping by Chalk Talk this week. And again, we appreciate all of you watching us. We'll have some special guests coming up in the second half of the program where you can get to know Tyrell Tate and Anthony Shelton a little bit better. We thank Coach Key. We'll see you again real soon. Welcome to the second half of Chalk Talk with Broncos Basketball. I'm your host, Alex Podlegar, and we're still coming to you from the campus of Fayetteville State University. And right now, I'm pleased to be joined by sophomore wing player from Raleigh, North Carolina, Mr. Tyrell Tate, and as well, the freshman point guard from Cary, North Carolina, Anthony Shelton. And guys, just wanted to get into a little bit. You guys are the new blood for, for Broncos basketball, not only the present, but you're also the future. Tyrell, tell me a little bit about why you came to Fayetteville State last year. When I was first getting recruited, um, the coaching staff seemed real trustworthy, and that really uh, drew me in. And then when I came on my visit, I liked, I liked how I felt. I felt like I was in place. Anthony, what about you? Well, what brought you to Fayetteville State? What attracted you to the, pro the program and the university? Um, it was actually the uh, TV game with the Salem. Uh, the crowd, the atmosphere, the game was just so back and forth the way I like to play. And I knew right away this is where I Tell me about the opportunity that you felt like Fayetteville State can give to a young player like yourself directly out of high school. Um, coming in, I didn't expect to have this opportunity. I knew I was going to come here and work hard. The coaches were behind me. Teammates pushed me. And I just went with the flow. And now you're starting at the point guard position. What has the first few weeks been like during the regular season? What's, your, what's it been like being a part of this team as a freshman? It was tough at first, but it's getting easier. We're gradually progressing, and everything's going smooth. And, and Tyrell, how about you, know, you had this role last year. Can you maybe give some advice to, to, to Anthony what it's like being a freshman player at, under Coach Key at Fayetteville State? What are some of the things that he should be looking out for? Well, Coach definitely expects the freshmen to bring a lot of energy and intensity. I mean, that's usually what freshman players are brought in to do. They're that, in, they're that extra boost that the coach is looking for. Did you have a mentor or anything? Were there teammates last year that kind of helped ease that transition for you? 
Yes, uh, all, all, actually all my teammates did. We, we knew we had to play together and we knew we needed each other to win. So it wasn't no one person that stuck out. Everybody needed to help each other. You were primarily the sixth man, first guy off the bench for Fayetteville State last year. You're in a starter's role now this year as a sophomore, an all-rookie selection for the CIAA. And now you're seeing a young guy like Anthony come in, start at point guard. What impresses you about his game and his poise, I guess, to be able to run the show as a freshman? Well, he, does, he brings energy and he's he controlling the team. People actually listen to him because of the point guard position, not because he's a freshman. They don't look at that. They say he's our leader on the court, and he brings that leadership. Anthony, talk about that a little bit, being that leader. I mean, you're this first-year guy. You're coming in to start. Has that been a difficult transition for you? Is that something you think about, that you have to be that vocal leader on the floor? I mean, not so much. We do it in practice, and I've been doing it my whole life, you know, playing point guard. So I just try to carry the same characteristics I used to have and do the same thing. You've been a CIAA Rookie of the Week already for you know, just the first couple of weeks of the season. Are you surprised at how well things have maybe come to you in the college game? Yes, sir, I am, but I know I'm capable of doing it. And, you know, everything's working out. What about as far as what you're seeing? Tyrell talked about, you know, guys looking out for him and helping him out. Are you getting that same kind of, you know, help around the locker room? Oh, yes, sir. Everybody's very helpful. If I had to pick one guy, it would probably be him just because he's in the same situation I was in last year. He's very helpful. Any ribbing, any hazing, any of that kind of stuff you got to no, worry about? You carrying no. a lot of bags or anything to the bus? Or? No, no, sir. No, you don't have to do all that? No. Nope. Did you have to do any of that, Toro? You carry the bag? Yeah. So I think, I think somebody needs to carry your bags down to, down to Barton next time you guys play. I, do. I got you. <laughs> now, you guys, again, you're from Raleigh. Tyrell, you're from Cary. You guys had to play each other in high school um, yeah. around. Tell me a little bit about that. Junior year, first year to uh, <laughs> playoffs. Man, this first comes round, to you quickly. Round. They beat us pretty bad. Pretty bad? Pretty bad. What, did, he, did he help out on that or what? Yeah, he did all right. He played all right. All right, well, I want to hear from the victor then. What, what was that matchup like? I mean... I don't really remember it. It's <laughs> kind of like an easy win, you know. I'm just playing, but yeah. I mean, I saw him play. He he was pretty good actually. I didn't think like later on here in the future he'll be my teammate. So I mean, I wasn't really looking forward to that. But I mean, now that we teammates, I'm glad he's here. So when Anthony was being recruited, did you hear his name come up at all? Um, talking to coaches, talking to players, and did you feel like you could have any you know influence on? saying, yeah, that, that guy can play. He can fit in here. Yeah, I heard his name um, come around the team, talking about he's being recruited. And when he was signed, I, I knew he could help the team. And quick, finally, guys, first for you, I want you to kind of give him an idea of what's coming up as this season progresses. What more can he look out for us? The CIAA tournament, CIAA play. What, what should Anthony kind of have his eyes open to and ready for? He's be ready to take on the crowd away games. and. You're going to have to be aggressive because you're not going to get any little calls. You just be, you got to be mentally prepared more than anything. And Anthony, finally, um, what are you most looking forward to as the season goes on? Uh, winning games. We're ready. We, um, we had, went through a little tough stretch here, but I feel like we're really coming around now, and it's going to be exciting. Good deal. Guys, I appreciate you joining us today on Chalk Talk. You've been watching Broncos basketball here at FSUBroncos.com. Be sure to check us out for all the latest news. You follow us on Twitter. You can follow us on Facebook. For all the latest news in Fayetteville State Athletics, follow FSUBroncos.com. For executive producer Adrian Ferguson, I'm Alex Podligar, and we'll see you again real soon.